Hello, my honeys, and welcome to the monthly check-in video with Healthy Mommy and Healthy Dad. These are my parents who transitioned to the plant-based Slim on Starch lifestyle later in life, we will say. So we check in with them every month to see how they're doing. If you're new here, hey, I'm Healthy Emmy. I'm the creator of the Slim on Starch program. If you want to work with me, a mindset coach and a nutrition coach on your plant-based journey to lose weight, then click the link in the down bar. So we always start out with what our favorite food of the month was, primary food and secondary food. Let's start with secondary food, what's actually on our plates. So Healthy Mummy, tell us what your go-to food or recipe has been from this past month. I'm going to go with Mexican food, and the reason I'm going with that is because I had forgotten how much I liked the jicama wraps. Um, and it just takes extra effort for me to get them because I've got to go to Trader Joe's. They're the only ones in our area that carry them. But um, I'd forgotten how good they are and fresh and crisp. And um, I'm really liking Mexican food with those again. So for those that are unaware, jicama wraps at Trader Joe's are made from jicama. They are completely raw, just a vegetable, and they're taco shells. So if you're trying to lose weight or you're not trying to have processed foods and you're staying away from the corn tortillas and the breads, those are a great way to still get your tacos in. And if you don't have a Trader Joe's, you could use romaine boats. So buy hearts of romaine and just make your tacos in those. Uh, and along that line, our Mexi is strictly... Um, crushed kidney beans with apple cider vinegar, brown rice with, depending upon what seasoning I feel like putting in, and then, uh, how do we call it? We call it water steamed, sauteed water peppers. Water sauteed peppers. Yeah, and peppers and onions. It's all in your cooking. Oh yeah, on the, it's, uh, it's certainly on the website. It's a bestseller. <laughs> um, uh, I think for me, you should know the answer because I sent you the picture the other day. Uh, I have been really digging the yunches, the salads that I've been making. It looks like the salad here is, of course, the greens, both kinds of onions, raw. You have the sweet potatoes, peanuts, your fermented cabbage, which is in the cookbook. Fermented onions. Fermented onions, uh, the rice. Lettuce. Banana peppers. Mm -hmm. And then using your dressing from the cookbook. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, it was interesting. You had asked me... Uh, what made it so special, and I really think it was the sweet potatoes. And, um, you know, as you know, I soak them. Uh, the potatoes soak for a good portion of the day uh, before cooking them, and so they really they get very soft very quickly. Um, and I think that really helps um, working its way around all the other stuff that's in the salad. And again, no two bites are the same uh, in the process of having lunch. So that, I think... This month is what's been working. So now let's talk about our favorite primary food of the month. Primary food is not the food that goes on your plate. It's the relationships, hobbies, activities that nourish your soul. So we'll start with Healthy Mummy and her favorite primary food from last month. I got my final, I had my final um, post-op appointment for my cataract surgery and they gave me the all clear to go back to yoga 100%. Um, and I, you don't realize how much you enjoy something until something takes it away from you. So um, I'm able to do all the poses that I was restricted on because of the surgery, and I'm really glad to have it back. Uh, in my case, uh, it's just been a reaffirmation of uh, whatever I do, I try to do my best. And, and I keep talking about going to the Y and exercising, being at, being at swimming or stretching and yoga, this combination thing that I do. Uh, the good news is I've kind of uh, availed myself to free help from the uh, worker at the Y who is a um, physical therapist, but his certification is Malawi, I believe. It's how it's pronounced in Africa. So he has to get recertified in the United States. So he's got years of experience. He knows I'm trying my best. Uh, and when he sees me doing not something completely right, he tells me. All right, so we're now going to share something that you learned in the past month in regards to your health. It takes um, a little bit more effort than sometimes you'd like to continue to eat the foods that are best for you. For I'll use the pizza as an example. Um, I'm back to the cauliflower crust rather than the bread crust. And that does take a little more effort. And sometimes you're like, ugh, I just don't want to do that. But it a little more... Um, time and in the end you're so much you're glad that you did um, so just accepting that 
um, it'll take a little more effort, but it's worth it. So just to clarify there, Healthy Mummy is doing her potato crust that is in her cookbook as opposed to just the pizza dough that Healthy Dad makes. And I talk about with my clients how every decision that we make has a pros and a cons list. So if you go with the more processed food, the pros is that it's easier, it tastes a little bit better, it's not as much effort on your end, but the the cons part of that is your stomach doesn't feel so good after, your weight might go up, your cholesterol might not look so great. And then the other pros and cons list that we have with you making the, the crust is that you put in a little bit more effort. It may not be something that tastes as good, but the pros are that you feel better afterward, your weight stays down, your cholesterol stays down. So no matter what decision we make, there's a pros and a cons list. And usually the thing that's difficult is that the, the decision that we should be making, the pros list are more delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. And the pros list of the pros and cons list that we want to choose, which is having the processed food, is the instant gratification that we have to sidestep. So I think another way to look at this as opposed to a struggle is recognizing that in order to be successful in the long term and be healthy in the long term, you have to sidestep a lot of instant gratification and immediate pleasure from food. Yep. Well, hopefully, as we've said before, you will look forward to being able to do it because you'll get better at it. You'll find the recipe and then you'll be looking forward to pizza night. Uh, like tonight is Mexi, you know, so, you know, timing is everything, your favorite meal. I knew that in advance. I, I think for me, the last time we talked, uh, I had talked about how I hurt myself and had to shut myself down. And uh, so I think certainly what I've learned is that I've got to pay attention, you know, not take, you know, I'm 65 years old, I'm not 18. And so, you know, recognizing that and not doing things uh, that I shouldn't be doing, you know, stay within what I can do. Um, so I think that, you know, just a, again, an affirmation or a reaffirmation of understanding where I am um, will help me because I, I think I took the necessary steps to uh, get better and then, you know, get back to a certain level and not overdo it. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was the lesson I taught myself. All right. So now we're going to share a win from the past month. What was your big win from February 2023? Uh, that as a newly retired person, second month of retirement, I haven't turned into a couch potato. I'm still doing the things that um, I have the time to do, but keep me active and kind of sharp. And um, Em's got me on good reads. So I'm expanding my reading and uh, still trying to stay fresh. I think in my case, it's more so avoiding the losses, um, not succumbing to uh, the ease of an alibi of not being able to do something like tomorrow. We're going to get, we're going to get a storm. Is that a reason to not to go to exercise? The mindset of keep trying to, you know, move ahead, even though I'm not going to get any stronger or any faster doing what I'm doing. So hopefully just maintain the status quo. Something I talk about with my clients sometimes is I see people, they just keep moving the goalpost and I say, stop moving the goalpost. Sometimes the best goal is just to maintain the healthy lifestyle that you've built and not think that you have to keep setting new goal after new goal after new goal mm -hmm. and exhausting yourself in this chase of something that you never really reach. Mm -hmm. And that's very much related to your retirement because it sounds to me like you're practicing the art of just being and being a human being and you've been a human doing mm -hmm. for all of these years. Yeah. Now let's talk about any struggles that you've worked through over the past month. Dad and I have been watching this show on Netflix and when I saw what I'm gonna talk about last night, I thought about us meeting today and how this must be a struggle for a lot of people. Um, they're out cooking on the grill and they've got these halved peppers that they've got put eggs in. And, and I'm thinking, wow, that looks great. Like it's that draw to say, oh, I can do that again. It's not a big deal if I just, you know, so I'm curious how you ha help people navigate through that. I would love to answer that. So I, I tell my clients that the first thought is not your responsibility. The second thought is your responsibility. When we see high calorie foods, or if we smell high calorie food air particles, if you walk in some of these baking cookies, the natural human reaction to that is to say, Oh, that looks good. I want to do that. I want to eat that. So when you see food on television, it's different colors and you can hear the grilling and you can see everybody smiling. Your primal brain says that equals survival. 
that food, there are people around it, they're eating it, they're enjoying it, it's colorful, it looks good. If I eat that, I'm going to survive. That's what your primal brain says when you see high calorie foods. That's where we have to come in in 2023 and remind ourselves that we're not operating on our primal brain that is geared for survival anymore. We know now that eggs are the highest source of cholesterol and you have a genetic predisposition to high cholesterol. So you have to come in and have the second thought and be responsible for the second thought, not judging what the first thought is, which is, oh, that looks good. That's a normal human reaction to have. I tell my clients, it's like when I see John Mayer, I'm like, oh my God, he's so <laughs> handsome, but I'm not going to leave my significant other for him. That's where the responsibility comes in. The first thought is normal. <laughs> The first thought is the normal human reaction. The second thought is where the responsible, higher level thinking adult comes in. We all have struggles and challenges on a daily basis. I think, again, where we both have uh, enough time that, again, our schedules aren't so clogged that um, we don't have to do that much to complicate our lives. And I think that's been our goal is to keep things simpler versus complicated and you know, be it anything, running your own life, um, trying to balance work and family and all that. Um, you know, we became grizzled veterans through the years and that to that three kids. But, you know, a lot of those responsibilities now are off the table. So the good news is I'm not hunting down things, you know, to worry about. So, you know, I don't want to say that that's, you know, a victory. But again, it's, it's again, it's the aversion of, of you know, as, you know, we talk about you got to find something to worry about. If I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not good, if I'm not worrying about, it, well, you know, that's not the case. But um, it's easier. That's easier said than done. So I think again, we try to remind ourselves on a daily basis to that we got more good than bad. I heard something in a book recently that really resonated with me that we we need not search for a problem free life because it simply does not exist instead instead what we need to be in pursuit of is a life with good problems mm -hmm. so your life is going to have problems either bad problems good com good problems or a combination of both and what we want to strive for is having a lot of good problems mm -hmm. on our hands now we're going to talk about positive changes that you guys want to make moving into the month ahead i would say that i'm grum continuing to try to, as Emily said, to have um, good problems and to not really worry about things I don't have any control over and just continue on my way um, doing more of the things that are good for me and uh, less things that are bad. I know for me, uh, as we are both readers, um, you know, it seems like we tend to devour books. Uh, and sometimes I think my goal is to read the book as quickly as possible <laughs> and, and be like a stone skipping across the pond versus, you know, getting the deep dive. Uh, the book that you gave me, Think Again, I've read it. Uh, it's my next book. I'm reading it again because it was such a cerebral read. And interestingly, in the book, he contradicts himself of what he said in a previous book. So I want to drill down on that. And Does he admit? Does yes, he, he does. Yeah. Um, but again, so I think I want to read slower and understand the words. Um, you know, when I get a serious book about a serious issue, that's, that's my goal is to, to fully you know, understand it, not say I read it, I understand it. Mm. Big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say when you have conversation, you need to listen to understand, not listen to respond. Mm -hmm. I have a topic that I think you may be interested in reading about. Are you familiar with masculine energy versus feminine energy? Yin and yang is all I know. So I think that this would be something fun for you to explore because you and I are very similar in that we have a lot of... So every human has masculine energy and feminine energy. It's not like men have masculine and women have feminine and that's that. Everybody has both. But you either are more dominant on one or the other. You are dominant on feminine. I'm dominant on masculine. And you have like not even a drop of feminine in you. <laughs> and so masculine energy is check it off the to-do list. When we get in the car, we want to get there as quickly as possible. Let's finish. Let's do it. Done. Done. Feminine energy is when you get in the car, you take the, the scenic route and you enjoy the scenery. And when you're checking things off your to-do list, you enjoy the process of doing them. So it sounds to me that you are trying to tap more into the feminine energy of being in the process versus just checking it off the list and getting it done. So that would be a fun thing for you to read about. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. All right, so we're going to talk about anything that might be coming up this month that you need help planning for. Maybe taking a trip um, south and staying with some friends and family or nearby them and um, navigating you know, the differences in the way we eat compared to the way they eat. What I would say to this, because I know you both so well and you eat 99.99% .99 of your meals at home and they're SOS approved, that these situations are so few and far between. They're a drop in the ocean nutritionally and the body has the ability to course correct and survive a little bit of quote unquote poison, mm -hmm. so to speak. And stress is one of the most unhealthy things we can quote unquote eat. So what you don't want to do is go into these situations so stressed about what you're going to eat to make sure that it's SOS approved, mm -hmm. that you lose the entire joy of the experience outside of it because right. you're so fixated on what you're going to eat. So for you guys, I think we take the approach of going, enjoying it, not stressing about the food, making the best decisions that you can, but really enjoying being around family and friends, knowing that when you come back, you're going to get right back on with SOS. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say this to everybody though, because people would say, oh, Emmy, I'm, I eat this way all the time and they're eating donuts at home, mm -hmm. but you guys aren't doing that. You're so solid on SOS when you're at home. You really are 99.99% .99 of the time people and you only eat this way when there's really no other option that I think in this situation, you go, you enjoy yourself, you do the best that you can and know that when you come back, SOS is here waiting for you. I don't have anything on the to-do list right now. I think you know, we're going into March, uh, so I know that next month golf season will start. And once golf season starts, it doesn't end. <laughs> um, but that's you know that's but that's a good thing. That's a good problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, as, as, as people have asked me, don't you get tired of playing golf? Don't you get bored? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good problem. Um, it really is. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you made it to this point in the video. What should we comment? Uh, spring. Spring. That's a good one. I love you, honey. So I'll see you in my next one. Woo!